Yo, Sony E-mount shooters, this might be the only lens that you need, no cap. What's up, y'all? Tight shirt Terry Warfield. Let's just go ahead and get right into the meat and potatoes. 1900 bucks. This lens is absolutely fantastic. Full disclosure, let me just say Tamron did not pay me for this video. They did send a lens for review. They didn't get no creative input in this video. However, today's video does have a sponsor, and that's Motion VFX. All of the overlays, the tracking, and social stuff, all at the bottom. All of that's for Motion VFX. And if you are a video editor, content creator, use these overlays and stuff to take your stuff to the next level. There is a link in the description for you to grab motion vfx effects if there's any discounts coupon codes any of that stuff available i will keep the description updated more on that later in the video let's go ahead and talk about this lens all oh, 1900 of it let's start with build first of all this lens is a behemoth as you see it looks kind of like a g master i got the 24 to 70 right here and even this lens the 24 to 70 is a big lens you can see how much bigger the tamron 35 to 150 is and of course i mean it's it's a pretty crazy focal length at f2 to f2.8 so obviously it's a big lens what do we have on the outside of the barrel so we have three customizable buttons you see it there's a barrel lock on the side as you see the barrel does extend when you zoom in and out you got your af mf switch and you also have a custom one two three switch now on the side of this lens you'll notice that there's a usb c port all of these buttons and stuff on this lens are customizable all you got to do is download the tamron utility and plug it in and you can change all of the parameters of this lens i really feel like other manufacturers that make lenses including sony need to start doing this because we should be able to update our lenses very easily like this anyways very very solid construction weather sealing all throughout 82 millimeter front element so yeah it's a big boy the lens hood that comes with it you know it's a typical lens hood it does have a button on the side to lock it which i really like that and typical tamron squeeze cap very very good quality i was not expecting this this is almost like gg master quality now let's talk about autofocus performance i'll be using this lens a lot for video and also for photo now i do shoot a lot of kids sports because my kids are in you know basketball and stuff like that so i'm typically using my 70 to 200 in those situations this has tamron's linear xd system in it so honestly it feels like a sony lens when it comes to autofocus as you see on the screen even at the different focal lengths like it never had a problem picking me up going side to side coming towards the camera going away from the camera i'm gonna be honest when i started to use this for sports and stuff like that i was like there's no way this is about to keep up with a sony lens and surprisingly it keeps up with my 70 to 200 g master i haven't tested the second generation 70 to 200 but the point i'm trying to make is i didn't notice any more hits or any more misses with this lens than my sony 70 to 200 and the situations that i use it for taking pictures of still things people a few burst photos here and there it keeps up 120 frames per second it keeps up without a hitch tracking and all that stuff i think the only time i can see where it could possibly fall short would be like when you are running towards the camera which a lot of lenses do fall in that category even some of sony's own lenses don't do well in that category but all in all like i don't think that you'll feel like you're missing out on anything going with this lens for autofocus now when it comes to zooming in and zooming out the zoom ring and also the focus ring are very well dampened the focus ring is also pretty linear when it comes to like manual focusing now one thing i love about this lens the same thing that tamron is always doing with all of their lenses the ability to get super close to your subject at 35 millimeters you can literally get like right up on something and take a picture which does give you some creative looks and stuff like that but all in all autofocus wise i feel like this lens is just as good 
in my use case scenario, which I always got to say that, is any other G Master lens or any other lens I own, period. All right, now listen, I'm not one of them pixel peeping snobs. I mean, I'm going to do it a little bit for this video, but typically I don't do that. Usually, as long as I take the picture, it comes out amazing. There's no major artifacts, anything like that. I'm cool, and this lens did not disappoint. Now, Lightroom is updated. There is a built-in profile for it. I turned it off for this set of photos just so y'all can see kind of where the imperfections are. But once you turn it back on, Lightroom literally corrects all this stuff. So anyways, this is a photo I took the other day, F6.3, 35 millimeters. I took this on the A7S3, so I can't crop in as much as I want to. But just looking at it, there's plenty of detail here. It's a little noisy, but overall, beautiful image. Going on to this photo, same thing. It's nice and crispy. This lens does suffer from some vignettes. So if we go ahead and apply the built-in correction, you can see how it kind of removes it. And that's just the default. I didn't touch it at all, but there's more samples of that later on in this strip. This is at F2.5, still a ton of detail at F2.5. And I think this was at 66 millimeter. Now, these are some basketball photos that I took. That's my stepson, Deuce. Some of these photos I had to take at like ISO 6000, so they're not the cleanest image-wise, but you can see that the images are in focus, the rendering is good, the background rendering is good too. So that's a picture of Deuce. That's another picture I caught him at, uh, this was 150 millimeters f2.8. And there's enough detail there, it's super mushy because it was at ISO 5000, but it nailed focus on his face. If we go to the next one, caught his dude he's in focus you can see the background rendering over here is actually real good moving on just looking through some of these photos like it performs really well for sports obviously it's not like the fastest sony sports lens out there but it performs actually really good now let me move over to some pictures i took of my daughter just so we can see the detail but look let's go ahead and punch in on the eye plenty of freaking detail didn't miss a beat you can see her pores and everything and this was at f2.8 87 millimeter another picture of her eating her breakfast in the morning same thing here ton of detail nailed right on her eye without a problem this was shot at uh f2 35 millimeter this is a picture of the most devious dog i've ever had this is macho nail focus on the eye this is at 35 millimeter f2 so look at this background separation the bokeh of this lens actually looks really good i'm not like into the looking at bokeh balls to make sure that they're they have the correct number of angles because this is a nine bladed aperture but anyways the bokeh looks good another picture of macho this is another picture of deuce and nail focus right on his eyes a little bit noisy a lot of detail still in his hair like right up here and this is at f 2.8 and 150 millimeters. Now this is one of those shots where, remember I told y'all y'all could get super close with this lens. I was at 35 millimeter, literally lens almost touching this decoration. If we punch in, plenty of detail there. It is noisy, but hey, you can see all the detail is right here. Now another close up with some leaves at 435 millimeter. All right, I'm gonna skip to this part right here because I feel like this is where a lot of y'all wanna know if the lens suffers from bad chromatic aberration and stuff like that. First thing I want you to notice in the corner, this is 69 millimeter f2.5, how much vignette there is. Now, if I go ahead and remove it, you can see it disappears, but there is some vignette with this lens. Now, the other good thing with this lens is chromatic aberration and all that stuff is really well controlled. Typically, you'll see like purple fringing and stuff when you're shooting at reflective surfaces like gutters and stuff like that. So here's a gutter. And if we look right here, there's really almost none. I mean, I can see some slight purple fringing right here, but it is very well controlled. If we look off in the out of focus area, you don't really see any up here around the satellite, which is really good. Now, a lot of people do complain about the flaring from this lens. I shot directly into the sun on this. This is at F10 84 millimeters. There isn't like a huge loss of contrast in this photo. You can see the flaring right here. It's pretty pronounced, but I'm not like against flaring. I actually like flaring and sometimes it is actually like a dope creative thing, right? And if you don't like flaring, don't shoot into the sun. It's like really not that difficult. Here's a sample at 150 millimeters f2.8. You can see that there is vignetting. Next photo is at f4. So I wanted you to see the difference between f2.8 and f4 when it comes to vignette. It's pretty significant. Again, the built-in lens correction will take care of that. And 35 millimeter again at f2. A lot of vignetting going on. 35 millimeter f2.8 kind of clears up f4 is pretty much gone so as you saw 
with this lens. It is pretty freaking sharp all the way throughout the zoom range. Another thing I wanted to show y'all real quick is the aperture bias. So at 35 millimeter, we're at F2. Once we get to about like 42, it goes to like F2.2, F2.5, that was right around like 60 millimeter. Right when we hit close to 85, it's F2.8 and then F2.8 throughout the zoom range. Now, if I stop all the way down at 150 millimeter, F22. Once I zoom back out, we get to about 100 millimeters and it's F20. We get to about 70 and it goes to F18. We get to about 40 millimeter and it's minimum F16 and all the way through 35. So before we wrap this up, I got to remind you about today's sponsor and that's Motion VFX. If you need graphics overlays for your YouTube videos or anything like that, they have a lot of professional graphics and overlays that you could use for like products and all that stuff i strongly recommend you try most of vfx out if you do any type of video editing trust me it will take your videos to the next level link is down there in the description all in all i think this lens is fantastic it's got me thinking about selling off some of my lenses because it is a very very versatile focal range although unorthodox so if you consider this lens is 1900 bucks you need to ask yourself these questions is 35 millimeter wide enough if it's not wide enough this is not the lens for you also think to yourself, is 150 millimeters long enough? I will tell you if you shoot sports and stuff like that, like I said earlier in this video, that extra 50 millimeters, not having it, I did notice. Your mileage may vary. Is 150 millimeters long enough for you? If the answer is yes, then in my opinion, as long as you're okay with the price, which I feel like the price is warranted because this lens is incredible, and you're okay with the size of it. This lens can replace a lot of lenses in your freaking camera bag. It's prime level sharp all throughout the zoom range. It's weather sealed. The autofocus is crazy fast. You got all of these customizable buttons and switches. It is built like a tank. It really reminds me of a Sigma Art or like a G lens or a G Master lens. If this checks all of those boxes for you, this might be the only lens that you need. I am very, very surprised and also very, very impressed at this lens. And I gotta go ahead and give Tamron the ovation. They did a fantastic job with this lens and hopefully they'll follow the same design language going forward. I know the new 28 to 75 carries the same design language. Hopefully they stick to this and keep the zoom and focus rings where they at because that's where they supposed to go. All right, Tamron. But anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the description. Until uh, next time, I'm out of here. I'm losing my voice. Peace and chicken grease. I'm out, Terry Warfield. Peace.